Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys all for coming. You know, session right after lunch on the last day of the conference. Gorgeous weather outside for the first time, you know. But uh, so, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. We'll see how fast we can go through this, but no. Um, okay, so this is about less, which I assume that everybody in here has heard of or you never would have bothered to come to this session. Um, who here has actually used less or looked at it at all? Okay, so everybody's done a little bit of it. Is there anybody here who has never used less at all? Okay. <laughs> used it. You've looked at it and you've seen it. Right, yeah, yeah, I did a presentation. Okay. <laughs> yes, less, you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be going through... Um, what it is, uh, most of you know, so th this won't take very long, but um, using less, and this is just l using less in general, and then actually how do you use less in Joomla itself. So first of all, what is less? It's dynamic CSS. It lets you do <clears throat> easy customization. One of the things that you can do is because it's dynamic, you are able to specify certain things that will then follow throughout your CSS. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Yeah, I need some more. Oh, there's water over there. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Get started here. <coughs> As I die in front of you. <coughs> All right. <coughs> okay. So we're talking about... <coughs> Good timing. Gives everybody a chance to come in as I'm sitting here dying. <coughs> What was that? Um, I think I got the water, which should be okay. So thanks. Okay, so we were talking dynamic CSS. It lets you actually um, define something and then use it throughout the CSS and have changes being made depending on what's coming into it. It allows you to do easy customizations because you can define things at the beginning and then use them throughout the rest of the. <coughs> <coughs> yes, and then, <coughs> and, then it <coughs> and then it lets you use them throughout the rest of your CSS files. And it lets you reuse a lot of things. You can define certain things in one place and then just call that in with sort of like a shortcut nickname so you don't have to retype the whole thing. One of the really great things about it is the um, power of the variables that you're allowed to use. And we'll be going over what those are and, and how those work. So it is a superset of less. That means that anything that is valid in less, I'm sorry, anything that is valid in CSS is also valid in less. Um, in fact, all you have to do is just take a CSS file and change the .css to .less. You got a less file. This, the name of this was less, you know, the CSS preprocessor. So there are different ways that you can do this preprocessing. Um, you can do it on the client side. You can let the browser do it using um, JavaScript. This is really handy to do sometimes if you're doing your um, development because then you don't have to worry about um, separately doing it. You can just put this up in your, um, your, your index.php file and have it automatically compile it or pre-process it every time you've made a change, so you don't even have to think about it. Um, and where you would get this, if you go to this link here, and I will be putting this up on SlideShare, so you'll have all this there. But if you go to the lesscss.org, they have there the compiler that you can use um, that gives you, or actually it gives you the JavaScript file that you would use that would process the less files for you. 
So the way that you would do it <coughs> is in your index.php file, you would add this link to um, a style sheet, and it's the style sheet slash less, where you're used to doing it slash CSS. And then your reference is just to whatever the name of your file is. In this case, it's called styles.less. It could be called george.less, whatever. And then you reference the less.js file, which is the thing that you would have gotten from lesscss.org, which is a JavaScript file that on the fly translates the, CS, the less file into actual CSS. Now, obviously, translating it client side means that every time somebody wants to go and gets to a new page, it's got to go through this translation at that time. So in production, what you really want to do is do it server side so that you create your less files, you pre-process them. It gives you, the output of that is to give you a CSS file and then you just use that CSS file um, just like you use any CSS file. You just use that in your, um, excuse me, in your uh, index.php file. So you, you don't even have less showing in your program at all. Those are just source files that you keep in order to create your CSS file that you use. So there are actually a number of different processors that you can use and a number of different workflows that you can use. One of them, they actually have a PHP version um, that you can have. They've got one from Node.js. This is a real common one that I'll go through, and this is what I'll actually be using in this demonstration. But if you um, have a Mac, they've got code, um, code, code Kit that lets you set it up so that whenever you change one of your CSS files, it automatically in the background, I'm sorry, whenever you change one of your less files, it automatically in the background does the pre-processing for you and creates the CSS files. So what you would do if you want to get this compiler down is the first thing you do um, is you need to install Node.js. And you get that from going to nodejs.org and downloading from there. Once you've installed that, you need to install less. And for that, you need to go to um, your command prompt, whether that's you know in terminal or in the command prompt on the um, on the Windows machine. And you have to do this at a level where you have the permission. So if you're doing anything that's Linux-based like the Mac, you know you need to sudo it in there. And the NPM is an installer that Node uses, other things use too, but it comes with Node, that it will actually go out and get what it is from online and bring it in and do the install for you. So if you do the sudo, says I'm doing this as the administrator, the npm will then do install, dash g means it's going to go globally, and then less, and it'll go out and it'll grab the less for you and install it. Then what you need to do is when you have some less files, obviously I guess the step 2a is you create some less files and do some, some work there, but once you've um, created it, you need to process the files to create the CSS files. So the way you would do it is you run less C, is the program that you run, against the less files and it will create the CSS. So in this particular case, I'm in the directory that has the CSS files in it. So I tell it, you know, go up two directories. Okay, my, my structure is I've got a CSS folder and I've got a less folder and I've got the files under those folders. So I'm, I'm sitting in the CSS folder and I say, go up two direct, you know, go up the directories to find the, the, the parent, come back down again into the less folder, find my template less, and then output template.css to where I am. So that's one way you can do it. And again, as I said, if you've got the Mac, you could use the code kit where you set it up ahead of time and you say, you know, if I'm in the direct, here's my directory where my CSS files are, and here's my directory where my less files are, and when I change it, I want you to compile this way. Now, there are other preprocessors for less, or for, I'm sorry, for CSS, and um, 
SAS is one of the real familiar ones that it was actually, um, I think, better known than LESS was. So, you know, why did we decide to go ahead and use LESS instead of um, SAS? One of the reasons is that um, LESS is faster. Another reason is that it's using the JavaScript, which is very universal. And it also um, is based on the CSS syntax. So that while there are some additions to the CSS that you already know, any of the CSS that you do already, you can put right in there. It's not like you have to learn a new thing to do what you already know how to do. OK. So using less, how do we actually use it? Variables. This is, a, this is one of the most powerful things that less has. And variables, which actually, if you're a real programmer, they should be constants. But we'll ignore that for now. We won't get too geeky about it. Um, what that is, is it's a place where you define something once, and then you can reuse it all you want. And you do it by defining something with the at symbol. So let's say you look at, take something like this and you put this in your file and it says at text-color colon and then you put what the color is. Now text color, you can, that can be whatever you call, again, you can call that George, at George. And um, I want to have this dark gray showing. And then what you can do is any place that you would normally put that hex code, you can just say at text color. So that here's your paragraph, and the color I want is at text color. So you can imagine the things you could do with that. You could, here's your H2 in your less file. I want my color to be at text color. Well, hey, I want my border to be the same as my text color. And then if at any point you decided that you didn't really like that, that 2C, 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 because you, you just want a little, little bit of shade of green in there, but still kind of gray. You could just change the, uh, that text color up at the top to a different one. And everywhere that you had text color specified, it would show you the new hex code in there. So this is one of the places where it's easy to customize it, because you can go through, if you need to, that, you know, Here's my green version. Here's my blue version. Or the customer comes along, the client comes along and says, you know, I, I really, I, I know you think orange is the newest, coolest thing, but I just can't stand orange. Um, and you have to make some changes or just some, whether it's slight or big, you can do it there. Another thing that it has is it's got these things called mixins. And you can kind of think of these as shortcuts. So, Let's say, these, my little dot here, because they look just like classes with the dot in front of it. Um, we don't need to do this quite as much anymore for two reasons. This particular example, because number one, the browsers have got much better support for rounded corners, which is what I'm about to show you. And the other thing is, is you know, rounded corners are on their way out now. Now that we can do drop shadows and we can do rounded corners and we can do gradients, Everybody's going flat, square, and <laughs> solid. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> you can use this for other things, too. So, and you know if you are doing rounded corners, you often have gotten into having to do one of these things, right? OK. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to define that in your less file one place? And then any time you wanted that to go in there, all you'd have to do is that, and it's rounded. You can even do it as just part of something else. So you've got this whole big thing of here's my, you know, here's my side box. I want all this sort of stuff, and you just throw that in the middle of, of the stuff, and it's automatically going to add that in for you. The other thing you can do with mixins that, wake up, is you can add parameters. So that last example that I showed you, that was five pixels. We were rounding it for five pixels. But let's say we didn't necessarily want it to always be at five pixels. We can go in there, and we can just have that at radius. And so you'll notice up here that in the parentheses, we've got the at radius. And that's what's coming down here. 
If you don't give it anything in the at radius, it'll use five pixels then. So it'll default to the five pixels. So this particular case, if we continue, you re recognize this. This would do exactly the same thing as it did before because we're not giving it any parentheses and sending it any number of pixels. So it'll default to that five pixels that we had. But let's say we wanted something that was going to be three pixels. All we need to do is go ahead and put three in there. And instead of using five for rounding the corners, it will use the three. So that makes it a lot more um, flexible in what you do it for. You can define it once and then use this to use it for you know, like all your rounded corners or all your whatever it is that you're creating. And again, we called that rounded because that's easy to remember, but you could call that anything you want to. You know, that's your shortcut. It's in your stuff. Another thing that you can do in here are operations. And here we're talking math. You can do, you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide, and you can also use your parentheses like you do in math in order to show the hierarchy. I want you to do this part first before you do that. So here's an example. Let's say we say that our base margin is going to be 15 pixels, and then we go to the the uh, box one and our margin here is bottom margin is going to be the base plus 20 pixels so that we've got the 15 pixels plus the 20 pixels and that's a 35 pixel. Here's another one that just just to show you how complicated it could be and I could kind of sort of maybe figure out times you want want to use this but don't ask me to give you one specifically but let's say you've got a base of five percent and you've got a filler that's the base times two, so that's 10%. And then you want to use that somewhere, so you say my height is my filler, which is 10% plus 100% divided by two. So if you have something that you're really trying to do some things to, you can do it. One place this can be good for is if, if you're doing things with trying to do responsive. There might be times when <clears throat> You might want to change your base, you know, you're on your, your cell phone, so you want your margins to be smaller. So you could change your base so that it's smaller. Or you could figure out that you want your margins based on the size of whatever the box is, which may have gotten smaller um, from something. So There are other things you can do with those, though. Let's say our link, this is our link color. So we show here, here's our A. Here's color is going to be that link color. But let's say we have our hover, link color plus pound 222. Two, two. So rather than going into Photoshop or something, and OK, now how dark, what, what color do I need to do to get this a little bit darker? All you need to do is add a couple more pixels to it to make it darker, minus to make it lighter. And you don't have to go through that whole thing. In fact, we have functions that are built in that do some of these things for you already. Here's your link color. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Look at that. Let's just lighten the link color by 10%. So you got lighten, you can darken, you can saturate, you can desaturate, you can fade it in. Um, and you can do the spin, the fade in and fade out. They have a fade in and a fade out. And those are making it more or less transparent. And then the spin is actually taking the color wheel and tweaking it. So if you just want to get some complementary colors going across and doing it, you can use it for that. Now, they also, when you're in here in less, you can make a couple different kinds of comments. Um, you can use the regular CSS ones. And these are included when you go and you compile your, your less file into your CSS, the comments will go along and will appear in the CSS file. So this is your standard comments that you're familiar with there. They have another kind of comments that are single line comments that if you've ever done PHP programming, you may have seen them. They're just the two straight lines. These are not included when your CSS file is um, are not included in your CSS file when you do your processing. So you can use those to put comments right within your less files that you don't really need to have showing up in your CSS. This is kind of interesting too if you're creating less files that you're using in your company 
but you're not distributing less files to your customers. You may have things in there for instructions, um, you know, for your, your, your designers or who has, whoever is doing this for what they need to do, but when the CSS files actually go to the customers, they won't see that information. So it just looks like this. Now, the difference, the other one were multi-line, so you could start and end and do like a paragraph thing. These are just single lines, so if you, do, if you go to your next line, just add another pair, add another pair. The add import, this you're all used to um, in CSS. One of the nice things about it um, in the, um, the less is that particularly, you know, if you do the server side, you compile this into your CSS file server side so there's no performance hits at all in using an add import because it doesn't exist anymore in your CSS file. It actually physically brings that in to the file where you're in. So we actually do use, tend to use these a lot in less. So all you have to do, okay, you can import, and you can import CSS files or less files within your CSS file, or I'm sorry, within your less file. And it does it just like you're used to. You just do at import and then the file name. If, you're, if it's in the same folder that you're currently in, you would just give it the folder name. Otherwise, what you would end up doing is adding the, um, the path to it that it needed to get to it. Often that's that dot, dot, slash to get there and come back. But you can see that you can put all of these imports into your less file. When you go and compile, it's all going to end up in one CSS file. So you have the ability to have a lot of different less files to keep things organized or to have different people working on for whatever reason, but you still end up with one file at the end that will actually have just the, the single HTTP release. You have the ability to do nesting as well. And this, <laughs> you use these little curly braces to do your nesting. So let's take this typical CSS um, example. You have a header, it's got a color. Then if it's the head navigation within that color, color maybe have a different font size. And then in the header, your logo might have some information. And also within the header on the logo, if you're hovering, you're doing something else again. Okay, so this is what it would look like in a CSS file. Now, if you're using less, you define your header, there's your color. Within that, you put your navigation, so you don't have to repeat your header. And within that, you put your logo. And then that logo, remember we were doing a hover, so that hover is not inside the logo, it's just another piece attached to the logo. So you just use the at, or the um, ampersand. ampersand, sorry, thank you. You use the ampersand symbol to show that I'm right at this level, so it'll take dot logo colon hover and do what you need to there. Now, there are a few debug issues when you're working with less. And the, one of this is that Firebug, if you're used to using Firebug to look at something and it'll tell you um, what actual line number you're on, it gives you the CSS line number, not where you find it in your less file. So one of the ways that you get around that is you can search on whatever the um, multiple selectors are there through your, your less files to locate what you need to find. The problem is, is that that doesn't work if it's nested because you could search on the individual one, like you could search on .logo, but you couldn't search on pound header .logo. So it makes it more difficult to find things. And also whether when you nest it, it's easier to read or harder to read. I guess kind of depends on the individual. They, they say it makes it easier to read. I happen to think it makes it harder to read. So it kind of depends on, on what you think there. All right, so that's how less works. How does it work when you're actually using it in Joomla? How have we kind of implemented it? First thing to know about it is that you don't need to use less for Joomla templates. You can just go ahead and continue to use CSS. You can continue to, you can use Bootstrap and you don't have to use less. Less is just one of those um, advantages that comes along with Bootstrap that you can use if you want to or not. So Joomla has the Bootstrap files already compiled into CSS. So we give you the less files, 
but we also give you the CSS files. So if you just want to include the CSS, plus whatever other CSS you have, you can go ahead and use the Bootstrap just fine. In fact, some Bootstrap template vendors don't distribute the less files at all. All they give you is the CSS files. So again, you don't need to use less in Joomla, but it really helps. <laughs> all right, so Joomla has added the GUI files. And this is in the media folder. There's the GUI folder under that. And in that, it's got a CSS folder, a fonts folder, an image folder, JavaScript folder, a less folder. And inside the less folder, look at what you got inside the less folder. <laughs> it has got all of these less files. Um, and you can see by looking through there, they've taken little tiny chunks rather than having 5,000 line file. They've got individual ones because you can then pull in the pieces that you need to have if you want to do that. Like if there's something in there, you're not ever going to, you're not going to use carousel. You don't want to have carousel in there. You can leave that off. Now when you're using it for a CMS like this where people might go ahead and include extension developer stuff who might be using, it's anticipating that you've got that in there. You know, you're more likely to want to include a lot of this than otherwise. Um, but you do have that option. Okay, so another one that's in there is something that's called the bootstrap extended.less. Those other files I showed you are the ones that are right from bootstrap. Those come from bootstrap. And this one is one that we added. And this is what has all of the Joomla code in it. This is the stuff that's different. Um, if you were to look at the GUI files right now, um, there are a couple of changes that were made to the bootstrap files within the bootstrap, within the GUI itself for Joomla. But the next, I think it's in the next maintenance release, we've pulled, we're pulling those out to make sure that everything, all the changes we make are in the bootstrap dash extended so that we've got plain bootstrap code um, in those other ones. So this will, in, this actually, the bootstrap less file now um, is what contains imports of all of the other less files. So what you want to do is you want to replace the GUI bootstrap less with one in your template. So imagine this is, this is in the templates folder, okay? You've got your my template folder. You've got a CSS folder and inside that you're going to end up with a templates.css CSS file. You don't have to create that file right now, okay? It's going to end up in there when you compile. You'll have the HTML possibly folder, images folder, let's say, and you'll have a less folder, and you'll want to have two files in that. You'll want to have the template.less file and the variables.less file. And then, of course, you've got your index.php file. So the variables.less file. This is where all those variables that I was talking about go, so that you can go to this one place and it will list, here's the link color, here's the um, border color, you know, here's, here's my main nav, here's my sub nav, here's my accent color, here's my whatever color. And so you can go in there and just change those. And just by changing those, you've changed all the colors that are showing up throughout the other files because all of those files, rather than having the hex codes on them, they are just referencing link color or whatever color. Okay, so this will set up the variables of your template. So you'd want to change those variables. Like I mentioned that, just copy the file right from the GUI into your template folder um, and then change it as you want. Um, so it might be you go in here and you'd have, you know, like the body background is going to be white and the text color is going to be a dark gray and your link color is, is going to be, you know, a, a different color, a darker color. Why would you want to pick that one? That must be something. Okay, never mind. Um, your hover color is going to be what your link color is except a little darker. And then here you're defining what your, your font family is. And some of these, like that one had the, um, if I can get right back there, 
you know, the sans font family. So these are variables that they have actually created. That's one reason why you want to copy this from what they have, because these are the variables that they're using throughout their less files. You can always create more variables, but these are the ones that are being used, so you probably want to make sure that you've got these as colors that you'd like to have. Okay, so what you do in the, that's the variable less file. We've created that, we brought that copy of that, and we brought it in. Now in the template file, what you're going to do is you're going to do at imports of all those less files from the media GUI. You don't need to bring those into your folder. You can just pull them in um, directly. And then import any less files that you've added in your template. Because I showed you the two, the template, which is the one we're doing here that just brings all the ats and the, the variable one. But you may have other things that you're doing that you want to just put in there. Um, in its own less file. If you do that, then go ahead and put the, import that. And then you can also just add styles directly into this template less file as well. And remember that straight CSS is valid less. So you can just go ahead and import all of those other files and just add straight CSS after that. And so, so basically, I'm just keep saying, use less where it's helpful but don't worry about needing to use it at all. All right, so here we go. Here's our template less file. We're going to go ahead and we're going to import the reset less. Then, and you'll notice we're bringing that in from the media GUI because we're, down, we're way down here in our folder, so we got to hop our way up to the media and then come back down again. Um, we're importing the variables less, and you'll notice we're directly importing that because that's in our same folder. We're not having to go up to GUI for it. And then we go back and we pull in the rest of the files from the media GUI. You know, you saw all of those files. Um, and then what we do is, af what you want to make sure that after the main bootstrap imports have come in, that's when you want to make sure that you bring in the bootstrap extended, because that is going to override certain information in the standard bootstrap files. This is the bootstrap extended could be called the Joomla file, whatever. OK. So then after all of those imports, then that's when you can go ahead and put in your code that is specific to this particular template. Now you notice that the, the variables less file we had already imported. And the reason you want to do that is you want to make sure that that's up at the top of the, um, of the import so that those variables have been defined before you're starting to use it. So you do a reset, then you bring in your variables, then you bring in all the less files from the GUI, making sure that you end with the bootstrap GUI. Then you want to bring in all of your stuff. And that can either be typing the, the less or the CSS directly in here, or having a secondary less file that you have that you just import in. Then what you want to do is you compile that less file, just like this, you do a less c, and then you, you designate your less file, and you do that little greater than sign telling it to put that into your template CSS. And that's what creates your template CSS. So you never want to go in and make changes to your template CSS file, because then when you go ahead and you recreate it again, it's all gone. Okay. Then you just call that template CSS file from your PHP as usual. And that's all there is to it. So any, any questions on it? So I'm often using less mm -hmm. in the initial phase of building a site. Yeah. Then once I'm in it, yes. I've got all my things mm -hmm. me, and I want to make a change. Then I'm sort of mixed up because somebody said once, never ever touch those Yeah. But if, for instance, you would want to make a change, would you go to the one of the less files? I would make the change in the less file. And then compile that. And then compile that into the main one again. Yeah. What I wouldn't do, I wouldn't change the, the GUI files. I would create an override within the template, you know, like at the end of the template CSS file. Or, I'm sorry, at the end of the template less file is where I'd probably go ahead and put that. That's what I would do. Yeah. Or if, the, the yeah. The way I've been doing it now is, and also a lot of the instructions for us, to always create the custom.
in CSS files in your CSS folder and do all your training, all your procedures in there, then you can never overwrite your template CSS. Well, they're doing it differently. What they're basically saying there is don't use, don't use less. I mean, if you don't want to use less, you can do that. That works. But if you want to be able to use the power of less, um, then what I would do is what, kind of what I said here is you've got the template folder and you're putting your stuff at the bottom of the, less, of the template less. That's your own, so that will never get overridden. Or you could do an individual a styles less also in there as well as your variables so that you could just import that. But I would always put it, I would always do it in less and then compile them, have it imported and compile it all into your template because then you've got your one CSS file and then you're able to use the, um, the variables because otherwise, you know, you're, you're going to be making changes in, at the CSS level. You've got to go down there and look up what is my link color, what is this color, what's that color. The then you, the old fashioned way, and then you go in and you change one of your variables and then you've got to go in and manually change everything in your CSS. So the, where that's good for is if, if you don't want to have to learn less and you don't want to have to, or you have people you don't want to have to deal with less later on, then that's what you'd want to do. But you definitely do want to keep it in a separate place. You know, you don't want to go into Bootstrap and change the Bootstrap file. You know, and that's... There's something you should never touch anywhere. I think it is... It may be those, the, the, those boots, right. And that's why I was saying that, that, like what we're doing here is we're leaving all the bootstrap files in the GUI. That's our copy of them in this particular case. And you could actually, you know, download them yourself and use those instead of the ones we're providing. You know, it's all six of one, half a dozen of the other. But um, they're right there, so you can grab them. Um, and then make a copy of their variables file and bring it in. And instead of importing the variables file from GUI, you use your variables file. And so it's in your template, so it's never going to get overridden if you bring in updating with the new, um, new less files or anything like that. So you've always got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay, I think we're all set then. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>